For those of you wanting to install a sliding driveway gate, where do you start? Well, like any construction project, you start with a good solid footing. And with sliding driveway gates, there's a lot more to it than you would think. But don't panic. I will take you through the basics and what to do if you've got a more difficult driveway. Sliding driveway gates have wheels that roll on a metal track that runs across the driveway and off the edge of the driveway where the gate opens. This track needs to have a good solid footing and if the gate is automatic, a motor needs to have a good solid pad. To install a footing, if you have a concrete driveway, you're halfway there. If the other half isn't concrete, then you'll need to put some in. You only need a strip of concrete 200 millimeters from the back of the fence posts that is as long as the driveway is wide plus an extra 400 millimeters or more if you want to fit a hard stop for the gate to open against. Well to be more accurate it's not actually the width of the driveway we use it's the opening between the fence posts. The pad for the motor must be hard up against the driveway, at least 400 millimeters wide and the same from the back of the fence. If the motor is to have its power hard wired or other cabling is required, then conduits may be placed in the motor pad when it's being poured. If the motor is to be powered from an outdoor power outlet, this can be placed on a small post next to the motor, not on the fence, otherwise how will the power cord get past the gate? If the gate has a guide post, this should be hard up against the driveway and set back from the fence by at least 170 millimeters or more if there are battens or a similar material fitted to the front of the gate as this will make the gate thicker and requiring more clearance. The motor then goes next to the guide post and the motor pad needs to be wider. The guide post can either be concreted into the ground at the same time as the footing is done or can be installed after by making the post up with a base plate and bolting it to the surface of the concrete with large sleeve anchors. The motor pad needs to be even wider again to allow for this. A guide post is also a handy place to put an outdoor power outlet. If the driveway is angled, the guide post and motor need to be set further along the fence line to keep them off the driveway. The guide rail needs to be extended to meet the guide post and the bottom rail extension needs to be made longer to reach the motor. If the driveway is angled the other way, the guide post and motor can be set before the fence line, the guide rail has plenty of length as it is, and the extension to the bottom rail can be shorter. If the ground is reasonably firm, the concrete footing and motor pad need only be 100 millimeters deep. And if there's a guide post concreted into the ground, this need only be 500 millimeters deep. If the ground is soft or wet, then dig down until you reach something firm and dry. The footing will need to be thicker and post deeper. To work out the volume of concrete needed, firstly divide the footing and motor pad into rectangles. Then multiply the dimensions of each rectangle to get its area and add the areas together to get a total area. Then multiply the total area by the depth to get the volume of concrete needed. So far this hasn't allowed for concreting a guide post into the ground. To get the volume of concrete needed for this multiply the area of its hole by the depth depth being from the bottom of the footing to the bottom of the hole. Adding the two volumes together gives a total volume of concrete needed, 
which is normally less than the minimum amount a concrete truck will deliver, but quite manageable to be mixed by hand using a concrete mixer. If a driveway has pavers and they're glued to a concrete base, then the track may be installed directly onto the pavers. Otherwise, a strip of pavers can be pulled up and replaced with concrete. Concrete that is coloured to match the pavers. Or, concrete can be laid under the pavers and the pavers glued on top. If the driveway is bitumen, then a strip will need to be cut out and replaced with concrete. Once again, the concrete can be coloured to match the bitumen. If the driveway is gravel, then a concrete strip will need to be installed that is raised up in the middle to keep the gravel off the track. All concrete strips should be at least 300 millimeters wide and 150 millimeters deep and reinforced with trench mesh, as there will be vehicles driving over them so they need to be strong. If there isn't enough room for a sliding gate to open, then more than one narrower sliding gate can be stacked one behind the other, requiring less room to open. These are commonly known as telescopic or stacker gates. The footing for these needs to be wider to allow for two or three tracks side by side. The motor pad and guide post need to be set further back from the fence to give clearance for the extra depth of gate panels. There are more details about footings for sliding and telescopic gates on my websites, as well as how to make and install the gates themselves and many things related. Links to these can be found in the description below. If a driveway has slope across it, the second half of the footing needs to be on the same slope as the driveway, but the pad for the motor must remain level and at a height that allows rainwater to run around it, but not so high it no longer lines up with the bottom of the gate. Care must be taken positioning the motor pad where it overlaps the gate footing, as these will now be at different heights. It's a good idea to draw everything up first before starting anything, so you know where everything will be. If the slope of the ground gets steeper off the edge of the driveway, it must first be excavated, then have a concrete footing and retaining wall installed, along with any posts required. A sliding gate can then open into this cavity. The retaining wall must be high enough above ground to keep the footing clear of any dirt and debris. The cavity needs an internal width of at least 500 millimeters to allow access to the back of the motor so it can be manually released and access to the track so it can be kept clean. If the slope is steep, a lot more excavation is needed and a much larger retaining wall is necessary. A telescopic gate may be more economic, as these require a lot less excavation and retaining. If the ground slopes down from the edge of the driveway, a metal footing can be used rather than a big chunk of concrete. The motor pad may still be concrete or could be made from metal. A metal footing need only be 100 millimeters wide by 25 millimeters thick and supported with 50 millimeter square posts concreted into the ground. Slope from the direction of the road has little effect so long as the footing has the same slope as the driveway in both directions. The motor pad must be level and at a height that allows water to run around it, yet not too high, otherwise it might not line up with the bottom of the gate, 
a common mistake is to make the second half of the footing level so the track needs to rise up a step but this does not work if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to learn more about sliding gates on a slope telescopic gates or such things as installing the posts or mixing the concrete I have some great videos coming up so I invite you to subscribe if you need help with your project please leave a comment thanks for watching